I'm here in the Al Mahdi Mosque. The foundation stone for the mosque was laid in 2004, and the mosque is renowned for its beautiful scenery and breathtaking views. One of the highlights of the mosque is it being a witness to the true spirit of sacrifice. This is something Hazrat Khalifatul Masih mentioned when he inaugurated the mosque. We will inshallah be meeting with a prominent member of the mosque to try gain a further understanding and explore the story behind this great mosque. The president of Bradford was brought up in this very city. So he was the best person to speak to regarding the mosque. When we found the site, we communicated it to uh, uh, Amir Saab and Azur, and Azur actually announced in 1999 the Jalsa uh, that Bradford had found a site, etc. Um, and then uh, obviously much later on uh, we got the approval for the planning permission uh, and then obviously in those days if you remember Battle for Two was taking all the priorities <laughs> so we had to wait for quite a while before we could get uh, the planning permission but it was 2004 um, when uh, President Azur came and laid the foundation stone in 2004. The site itself was around 0.6 of an acre and the total cost of the mosque was also um, 2.5 million, mm -hmm. um, which as you know, Azur announced yeah, the uh, Lajnai and Khudam Lendia to uh, uh, contribute. So do we have any plans, Azur? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, these are the plans that were actually um, uh, shaped up, which just shows uh, how beautiful uh, the, the, the sort of the, the, the plans and structure of this mosque uh, is, uh, you, you can see here. So you've got the men's floor at the top, then the ladies at the entrance level and the reception um, all at the bottom. And uh, as I said, uh, you know, the, the dome was from the Indian subcontinent and the minarets from uh, Medina Masjid. We virtually tried to copy those, smaller in size, of course, <laughs> with the winds here, uh, they're really high winds. Uh, and then the stone, you know, Yorkshire stone is very famous and we tried to blend it in with that sort of look. Um, but it's the setting as well, isn't it? Where yeah. So, so, the, so the, this side elevation is from, yeah. we're looking at it from this side, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The site was bought really after Cliver uh, Masir Abe Remullah said, I want, you know, 10 purpose-built mosques across the UK. And Bradford was in the forefront of trying to find a site. And we looked at lots of different locations, as other friends have up and down the country. But the beauty of this was the hilltop site that we saw. It was on an incline, which nobody wanted to buy. And the land was going for about 35,000. But again, for many years, nobody touched it. The engineers and the architects that looked at that, they, they warned us, they said, look, you're going to spend almost a million pounds on the groundworks here. So think about it. You know, it's, it's going to be a huge challenge moving soil around. And because it's got a, such a tight location, the cost of construction will go up as well. So this was presented to the Jamaat and we, we said this is not going to be a cheap mosque to build. But uh, the wonderful thing is that when you build it, it will tower over the city and it will be a, a landmark and everybody will see it from miles around. Masjid al Mahdi was inaugurated in uh, November 2008 by Azad Mir Mawmineen Khilwat uh, al-Masih Khamis Eid al-Tala bin Asr al-Aziz. Uh, he graciously came and opened uh, the mosque and uh, it's been a source of blessing for Bradford Jamaat in every way really and uh, you know the name Masjid al Mahdi in a city like Bradford with so many Muslims is so important as well and uh, uh, the attraction it has had certainly for the community it's been a wonderful blessing. <laughs> हम तो करबो बला से गुजरते रहे अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह वी हैव अराइव्ड इन मैनचेस्टर द जर्नी वाज रियली ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल सीन्स अगेन दिस मॉस्क वाज इनोग्रेटेड बाय प्रेजेंट हुजूर मे अल्लाह बी हिज हेल्पर एंड वी हैव कांटेक्टेड द मॉस्क बिफोर वी केम वाइल ऑन द वे इन फैक्ट एंड दे हैव होपफुली मेड सम अरेंजमेंट्स so, um, I'll see you inside, inshallah. It came as a surprise to find that the missionary Manchester was actually a good friend of mine. If you could tell us something about the location of the mosque, it seems it's very centrally located within Manchester. By the grace of Allah, it is central. Literally, you, uh, at a walking distance, you have some very important places, you know, very nearby. 
Just an example is the University of Manchester. So you have students who come and park in our masjid, the Ahmadi students, and they walk to the university, which is a 10 minute walk. The truth is that this was never the case when this masjid was initially acquired. So this was a very rundown area in the 80s. And the members at that time were a handful of members. So when they thought of proposing the idea to Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih Rabi Rahimullah, that these are some of the places that we have, uh, we have compiled. And there was a few of them. And among the compilations of different places, one file was for Darul Aman, Hume, in Hume. Now, Hume was one of the most rundown areas in the Northwest region, not just Manchester. And uh, it was, it wasn't worthy in the sense the people who took the idea to Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih Rabi Rahimullah, they thought that this proposal would directly be rejected by Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih Rabi Rahimullah. But the vision that he had was that when he went through the proposals, he picked out the proposal based in Hume, and he said that acquire this place, inshallah, Allah will put blessings in it. We saw there when Hazur Akhtas came and visited the site, uh, what, are you, what are your plans? We showed him the plans and Hazur said, no, if you're going to build a mosque here, it has to be a big mosque. This is a city center and you have to build uh, a mosque, uh, a large mosque. And he won't come if it's just a single floor because they were talking about just putting a single floor in. He said, no, I want a double story building built here. Within that one million pound budget that we set ourselves for the single floor, um, we were able to build not only these two-story mosques, brand new mosques, purpose built, but we were able to refurbish the rest of the site, which was the old working men's club, and we had the old mosque in the in the in the, one of the halls. So completely renovated that and put another floor on top of that as well. So ye dua kare ke Rabba na ta kabal minna inna ka antasamir ali. Bas hamari mali kurbaniya us waqt kabooliyat ka darja paayengi jab ham Khuda Taala se ये अहद भी करें और दुआ भी करें कि इन कुर्बानियों को कबूल फरमाते हुए हमारी रूहानी तरक्की के भी सम्मान फरमा और इस मस्जिद को आबाद रखने की तौफीक भी عطا फरमा क्योंकि तू जानता है कि खालिसतन तेरी इबादत के लिए ये मस्जिद तामीर हो रही है फ्रॉम द विजन ऑफ हजरत खलीफतुल मसीह राबे टू हुजूर अक्तस सैयदुल्लाह इनोग्रेटिंग दिस मॉस्क द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन दिस वेरी एरिया is nothing short of a miracle. And this, obviously, I was told this very story by the elders of this Jamaat. And I have seen them become very emotional when they were telling me that we never thought that this area would transform. However, this is in fact testimony to the fact that Khulafa, they see a vision which is above everyone else. And he saw a vision which today we've seen fulfilled in the time of Khalifa Tul Masih Khamis Sayyidahullah. Humne dekha khudai ka zinda nishan Wo jo firran raste me aya magar Right now, we are on our way towards Leicester and we are stuck in heavy, heavy traffic. I mean, there's miles and miles of traffic here. So I'll just talk about Manchester for a bit. I thought Manchester, like, like Hartlepool, it had its own miracle. I mean, it's a witness to how far Khilafat can see. Like, the, the vision of Khilafat is beyond any normal human being. When uh, Hazrat Khalifa Masih Rabbe, when he gave permission to buy the land and instructed them to uh, acquire the land, the place was a rundown, the place was rough. But now look at it, it's like at literally the centre of Manchester. It's where everything is happening. It's in a perfect place. And everything turned out perfect. Apart from this traffic. We've arrived here in Leicester. The drive down, we did face a lot of traffic, but this is one of the earliest mosques to be inaugurated and it's also one of the smallest in size. But come inside to get a closer look. The head of the planning committee meeting at the time that was going to approve whether the mosque could go ahead or not 
was a ghair md uh, muslim and he he looked he looked like the type that would not look upon our application favorably and um, uh, his appearance and demeanor was such that we thought that this is not going to go anywhere because the, the head of the planning committee has a strong influence on the people that vote uh, ultimately. So our, our number came eventually after about an hour and um, he said that uh, before uh, the people talk about this, uh, I would like to say something uh, about this Ahmadiyya Muslim group. So um, I looked at the person sitting next to me and I thought, this isn't going to work out. He's, he's going to uh, say something that's going to be not in our favor. He says, I don't want you to view these people like other Muslims. These people are peace loving, loyal Muslims who do a lot of charity and they are not at all like the uh, certain Muslims or extremist groups that you see portrayed in the media. Um, I have researched them. I have looked into them. They are well-educated people and uh, they have a good community cohesion and they have a good spirit also. So I would strongly recommend that this um, application is approved. A true mosque is a place for Muslims to congregate to, together in order to worship the one God. Furthermore, it is also a place for Muslims to gather together to fulfill the rights of God's creation. Thus, where this mosque provides us with a place to worship God Almighty, it also presents us with a place to join together to work for the betterment of society and to serve humanity. You'll be amazed to know that we've spent uh, less than half a million pounds on that mosque. And again, it's a, it's a miracle when you tell people, if you just look at the square meterage, that figure should be at least million five, million four, 1.4, 1.5 million pounds, just on the square meters that you've created and you multiply these days, people say you can't get much less than 2,000 pounds a square meter in construction. So on that basis, you know, we should have been spending a, a million and a half pounds on that project. But Alhamdulillah, because of the amount of effort that goes into the Vakariyamul that goes in there, and even those professionals that we pay, uh, you know, their wages, we pay less than, the, you know, what, and they work overtime, they'll work Saturday, they'll uh, Sundays, they'll work, they'll put a lot of volunteer hours into it. And then the love that they put into that, because they know this is a mosque, and, uh, you know, Allah has promised them that if you build his house here, he'll build for you in, in the hereafter. So that philosophy that each of them adopt in their work, and I think that's the reason why they, they get so much more out of the efforts that they put in, by the grace of Allah. And through all the, the trials, the tribulations, the times when things weren't going well, the things, times when things were going well, it all led up to one moment. And that moment was on the day of the inauguration when all of the Jamaat was standing outside the, um, outside the mosque and uh, the Lajna and the Nasarat were uh, reciting their Tarana and uh, a whole calm had spelled upon the street. The, the road had been blocked off and uh, it was a wonderful atmosphere in the anticipation that Huzoor is about to arrive. It was a feeling that I can't really um, convey properly in words. It is something that is like a pinnacle, a pinnacle of a, an emotion, of a, of a roller coaster that you have been on all these years, trying to get your own purpose-built mosque and looking for the day that, inshallah, one day Huzoor will come, one day Huzoor will come. And at that moment when he walked out and he greeted me, I think, um, uh, it was worth it completely. That was the Leicester Mosque, Bethul Ikanam. Uh, as you heard, the Leicester Mosque is very, very lucky as it's been graced by the presence of two Khulafa, Hazrat Khalif the Masih al-Rabi, may Allah be pleased with him, and President Hazrat Hazrat Khalif the Masih al-Khamis, may Allah be his helper. But that's done now, and it was a wonderful mosque. But now, on our way towards Birmingham. We've arrived here at the Daru Barakat Mosque in Birmingham. And as you can see, the view is truly spectacular. Just summarizing Leicester quickly, I thought the Leicester Jamaat was very lucky that they had the presence and the guidance of two Khulafa. 
Tomorrow, inshallah, will be day three, and we will be showing you this very mosque, Dar Barakat in Birmingham. Then we will be traveling down to our final destination, the Fazl Mosque in London. But for now, I'm signing off. If you could tell us something about the history of the mosque, when was this land bought? Did uh, Hazrat Khalif Tamsir Rabe or Hazrat Khalif Tamsir Khamis visit this mosque? Yes, uh, according to reports, when this was bought in 1987, it was uh, completely uh, dilapidated. There wasn't anything attractive here. As such, um, nobody really cared for it uh, until the Jamaat showed interest and it was sold to the Jamaat at uh, 200 pounds, amazingly. Wow. Yes, this large complex. Darul Barakat, which means the House of Blessing, was originally built as a primary school for girls in 1889. And that was the time when the Ahmadiyya movement was established by Hazrat Masih Mawadala this place became derelict in 1970s and uh, the, the class, the school stopped working and uh, the city council wanted to either just uh, demolish this building or get some community to refurbish it and renovate it to the same old standards. The overall um, picture was that it was a miracle that we bought it. It was a miracle that the planning went through and it was a miracle that the council sold it to us. And when they realized that we're Ahmadi Muslims, not just because there was there were 60 mosques at that time in Birmingham. So the, when they saw a planning application for a mosque, they just took it as another mosque. So it just went through the system. But when they realized it was the Ahmadi Muslims that were building this mosque, then there was a hue and cry from the majority there. And they challenged us uh, in the court, but it, they didn't get anywhere. Alhamdulillah, they ruled in our favor and the rest is history. बहुत सारा खर्च जो है वॉलंटियर्स ने वकारीमल करके बचाया है जो मेरा अंदाजा है कि जितना खर्च हुआ उससे करीबन डेढ़ और होगा <coughs> ये तकरीबन खर्च हुआ एक इशारे के 6 मिलियन पाउंड 16 लाख पाउंड और जैसा कि मैंने पहले भी कहा है बर्मिंगम जमात को बहुत बड़ा हिस्सा इस मस्जिद के बनाने में माली कुर्बानी का the work, how the work itself is also blessed. Each carpenter, even the like, laborers, the, you know, the masons, whoever working on the masjid, there's something, there's something special about how they work. Uh, I can't explain it to you, and they can't explain it to you, that the effort they put in. For example, I'll give you one young man who used to do our carpentry work. Um, and uh, in one day he fitted 60 doors. I mean, it's unimaginable that you can fit 60 doors in a day, but he did it. In a 12-hour period, he fitted 60 doors, you know, and uh, he couldn't believe it himself. And it's something that maybe if he did 20, you're doing a fantastic job. You know, that's, even that's, but he did it. This was the Darul Barakat Mosque in Birmingham. We gave you a detailed history lesson and an exclusive tour of this great and historic mosque. Our final destination is the Fazal Mosque in London. That will be our final stop and the end of this historic tour. <laughs> Mi karo ye zami hi nahi Ab to karne hai zera Sama saathiyo We are on our way towards the final destination, the Fazl Mosque in London and sadly our trip is coming to an end. Uh, at each mosque the viewers must have noticed, I myself noticed it a great deal uh, the immense blessings and the countless favours of Allah the Almighty at each mosque. 
For example, just in Birmingham, we heard an interview that the whole land, the whole land was bought for two hundred pounds. These days, our, uh, our phones cost that much, and at that time, Allah the Almighty granted the Jamaat uh, a, a, a land according to our price budget. That's something that we could afford. And now, look, such an, a beautiful and great building. A great place of worship, a house of God is there. You see, and it's a, you see this at every mosque, the, the faith inspiring stories. And it's truly a witness of God's power and the favours on Jamaat. Alhamdulillah, we arrived in London about half an hour ago. And now we've just turned, literally just turned onto Gresson Hall Road, where many viewers will know uh, the Fuzzle Mosque is situated. Uh, as we said in the beginning of the program, that this is our final destination. The main point about this mosque is, of course, it is the abode of Khilafat, the home of the Khalifa, and the crown jewel of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community here in the UK. And seeing it after such a long time is truly emotional. But let's go inside to get a history lesson on this great mosque. So where was the foundation stone laid and what happened during the, the whole ceremony? Well, we are talking of uh, 1924 when Khalifa Masih II, he came here <coughs> and he uh, laid the foundation stone with his hand. According to the information, which is also supported by photographs, we know that uh, this was the place where he stood along with the other people those who could come here and the structure was from the foundation it came up to almost this level mm. roughly speaking and it was this place was you know made round as the mihrab and when it was there there was a special stone which was prepared for this purpose as the foundation stone of course the foundation bricks must have been laid there but uh, in the visible foundation stone was a very big one. Mm. And that is outside the mosque, even nowadays we can see that. Mm. So Hazrat Khalifat al uh, the second, he uh, came here almost to this point, and with the help of some machines, mm. the heavy stone was uh, brought here and lowered. This uh, procedure is that after laying the foundation, there is a silent prayer. So he led the prayer here, standing in this Standing position. at this very place. Yes, yes. And then there were so many other people there. And that was also an occasion of offering the congregational prayer. Mm -hmm. So for that purpose, as Khalifat Musi the second, he came back and he sat, he sat, he stood alone at this very place almost, we can say, mm -hmm. and the first line was made there. So the foundation stone that has a Muslim yeah. actually touched, that is still, that we can is, see that from outside? Yes, yes, Do, yes, could you show us that please? Yes, okay. I was surprised that the foundation stone was still visible, but on our way, Imam Sab enlightened us with another unique fact. You will see this dome, it is towards the end of the mosque, yes. which is not uh, the normal way of doing it. Mm, of course. Normally the dome is in the front part of the mosque, okay. but here they have put it at the back. There is a full book of the history of the mosque in Urdu, it is printed. In that it is mentioned that when people will see the dome at the back of the mosque, mm. slightly, not close to the mihrab front part, people might be wondering that why the people, those who built the mosque, they have put the, in a wrong place. Mm. So they have a, put in, in writing that it is not by mistake, it is due to this uh, uh, view of us that in future, when at a certain time the mosque is going to be extended, Mm -hmm. The extension can only take place on the back of the mosque because the front, that is the end of our area. Yes. So we can't take the mosque further. Mm -hmm. 
So it will be extending on the back side. So they have written that when the extension will take place, then this dome will be exactly in the middle. Yeah. This is the place uh, where this uh, foundation stone can be seen there very clearly. And according to what we understand, that at that time a special stone was prepared with the blown up writing put into this form. And I think there is also a little bit of curve in it mm. because it was eventually going into this wall which is round shaped. So there is a little bit of curve in that. So anyway, this is uh, the original stone as far as we understand, which was prepared at that time and which was put in this very place um, by the blessed hand. Remember in those photographs that there are some chains attached to it and gradually it was lowered here. So it means that uh, this is the bottom of that wall, you can say, yeah. or maybe the wall is up to here. So the wall was just, made up to here? Yes, and then this up to it. somewhere here. Hmm. And it just came in the middle hmm. and then it was there. Huzur put his blessed hands and this is how the foundation stone was laid. And this writing that is on the wall, this was uh, Hazrat Muslim wrote but this on the paper first? On, a, on the paper, yes. Okay, and then it was etched and in And then later. it was uh, blown up hmm. and then it was uh, engraved and etched like this. And later on the English translation was also added to that one. And the date is also mentioned there, mm. uh, 19th of October. Yes, 19th of October. 19th of October, 1924. 1924. That is the day when the foundation was laid. So mm. exactly history is well preserved. And one thing which I mentioned uh, to you over there as well, or, uh, which I mentioned earlier on, that normally when the foundation of a mosque is laid, uh, the prayer is made that may Allah make this mosque a center of Islam, center of propagation, and uh, the people of this town or this uh, area are at the most, this country, okay. they may be benefiting from that. But I think there was certainly something very divine behind this thought of Hazrat Muslim Aud, that when he sat down to write the sentence, he wrote the sentence as you can read here, yeah. that this was, uh, he planned that this mosque should serve as a sun and the lights, rays radiating from it should enlighten not only this country, but other countries of the world as well. So it was a global concept and that image was there. That, is, that must be a divine idea which was given to him and he put it there and it is no less than a prophecy. And we can see that through the MTA which was established, the original headquarter of MTA was here in this uh, premises. So that is exactly the message is going to all parts of the world. So not only UK is benefiting where the mosque is located, but all countries are also getting the benefit so, of that. So in fact, it's actually a fulfillment of a great and, prophecy. And he said, you know, in all the countries around the blessed beams of the heavenly light of the Holy Prophet mm. should be spread there. So it's a, I think, very prophetic sort of statement. And in fact, and it covers the whole world. It covers, yes, it covers the whole world. This is our roots. This is where it started in 1926. Um, that uh, without this, all the other 40 mosques that are around the country now would not have happened. Fuzzle Mosque is, is, the, is the mother of the mosque of the UK. And uh, in many ways, it's the ladies of Qadian that funded this, that have a hand in all the other mosques. So how Allah blessed those sacrifices is quite a miracle in itself.